Good afternoon, Money.net Live. You know him, we love him, Jay Woods. Freedom Capital Markets Live from the New York Stock Exchange. Jay, how are you, man? I'm doing all right. It's a little smoky in here, but uh, besides that, uh, in these Canadian wildfires, everything's good. You know, um, I think a lot of people have been complaining lately that the volume is drying up a little bit. Um, tell us a little bit about what's going on in the markets down there. Well, it's drying up right now. Let's, let's look at a few reasons why. You know, you got we're through Memorial Day, summer season. We're through earnings season. Uh, and we're waiting for the Fed next week. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, the market is kind of slowly going up. A nice little rotation under the surface, which we'll talk about. But uh, there's no one really putting a lot of money, a lot of action in, in individual names or anything going on because we're kind of in that wait and see mode. Uh, but however, Friday, that will change. You're going to see a huge spike in volume uh, this Friday and the following Friday. This Friday is quad witching, uh, where you have the expiration on four different asset classes which is always fun here and that makes for a busy close for the traders and then uh a week from friday is the russell reconstitution where you're seeing a big lift in the russell 2000 as we speak um you're going to see a nice rebalancing there and uh, it's a big volume event and then we got the end of june coming up which will be a huge volume event as we close out the first half of 2023 yeah, and I'm looking at the IWM right now. Uh, you know, last week, the uh, last month, even the IWM was at 173. We're at 187, man. Yeah, 187. Nice breakout of a you know, much like the S&P 500, just not at highs uh, for the year. It was actually lagging. Everyone knows Russell 2000 was basically flat until a week ago or until last Friday. So over the last four days, I think we've gained 6%. It's been a heck of a run. Um, and it's good to see that rotation in the small caps. And what's been pulling back? The stocks that have led, with the exception of Tesla. Tesla's looking good. But you're seeing the technology names. Apple, big event Monday. It peaked all-time high, and then it's pulled back. Microsoft's pulled back. NVIDIA, some of the semiconductors that have been hot they're pulling back. These are normal retracements in bull market cycles, normal retracement in strong uptrends. They went out a little too far too fast, a little euphoria built in there. They're slowly pulling back. And now we're seeing industrials, materials, financials catch up. And today the utilities are finally moving. Uh, so we're seeing a broad based broadening approach to this market. These are how bull markets are built. Uh, bull markets do not go up like bear markets go down. Uh, they can be slow, they can be choppy, they can be boring. And this boring action underneath the surface, despite the lack of volume, is constructive. Yeah, and four days ago, I'm looking at it now, Caterpillar 205. Today, it's at 235. Yeah, uh, like I said, the industrials are hot right now. Uh, you're seeing them catch a bid, and you're seeing a lot of these short-term downtrends reversing. And when you see that, one, there's a fear of missing out. Two, people know the rotation story and they want to go where the next things are so people can capitalize on a quick move like this. They take profits where they were hot in uh, the, the Magnificent Seven as now everyone's calling uh, the seven leaders in the S&P 500, the mega caps, and they're going and broadening out and industrials is uh, catching that tailwind right now. Yeah, and I'm looking at DHI, DR Horton. One thing you were talking about earlier was the home builders, right? Yeah, the home builders, uh, you know, a lot of people, uh, they scratch their head when they see the home builders making you high. And when you look at the HXB, H, the XHB, excuse me, um, what did it do today? It broke out to all time, all time highs. Um, and we have mortgage rates at a very high level, over 6%, mostly across the United States. But we also, what they don't talk about is a housing shortage. And uh, home prices have not come in dramatically despite the spike in mortgage rates. And right now, look at the home builders. Look at BLDR. It's the biggest stock in the home building index. That's at 52 week highs. Lenar is trading towards 52 week highs and reports next week. Be very interesting to see their guidance. Uh, so, this is a sector that is kind of flying under the radar. And, you know, the fundamental story is a little mixed, but the technical story is telling us a much different picture. Yeah, I'm looking at DHI now, DR Horton here, breaking out the all time highs here uh, over, the, over the last this week here. So, yeah, I, I love it here. But uh, what did break to an all-time high was Apple with Vision Pro. Uh, but it also seemed to be a pullback over the last couple of days as soon as he released the Vision Pro and $3,600 price tag. People didn't seem to like that too much. Yeah, let's, let's be realistic about this. And, you know, I'm not a fundamental analyst. I don't cover Apple, but I'm a father who buys Apple products. I'm an Apple consumer for years. 
all right, for $3,600, I can get an iMac Pro, I can get a new iPhone, I can get AirPod Pro, and a new watch. And they want me to spend it on a virtual reality headset, which we've done with Meta. Uh, we got that when it came out. We experimented. It was fun for a couple hours, but it's not something that, to me right now, is a need. Now, I will never question Apple. They always reinvent it. When the watch came out, I don't need a watch. And then all of a sudden, I'm addicted to my watch. Maybe something will change with this, but the price point, you know, as a parent, you're not buying it for your kids. The younger 20 year olds are not going to put this on the priority list. So, it's very interesting to see this rollout, um, and it did not have an effect on the stock. I mean, it, but what, you would you, say, what would you say to was, Apple and Tim Cook uh, produced this and said, look, it's going to replace your phone, it's going to replace your watch, it's going to replace your iPad and your iMac? Um, pr prove me wrong. That's what I would say. And you All know right, what? I like it. You know, and, and Tim Cook will probably do just that because the people at Apple are much smarter than you and I. SPX, let's look at that for a second. Um, breaking out of 4,300 earlier uh, yesterday, uh, now down to about 4,270. Is this, is this big, big resistance up there? Well, it's psychological. So the big resistance level, and we talked about it for, I think, two months on, the, yeah. on your show, was 4,200. And every time we got to 4,200, we failed. It was a known, but every time we failed, we went a little higher on the low so we were seeing higher lows very progressive we finally broke above it it wasn't the debt ceiling that broke us above it was actually the unemployment number and then finally the debt ceiling we put in the rearview mirror and we got that momentum and that rotation that we were hoping for now the next level everyone's talking about is not exactly 4300 it's 4325 that's the august high right before the jackson hole meeting last year um and you know i think with you know, with no fanfare, we may get there, test it, and fail. But 42.99 was the high today. We have not hit officially 4,300. So right. people like these round numbers. I'm a round number guy. What can I say? Um, and that is the level of resistance we're seeing right now. But as you let off this whole conversation, the volume's not there. We're not seeing a lot of people rush in and chase, but we are seeing rotation from winners into some of the laggards, and that's healthy, but it's not pushing us to all-time new highs in the S&P 500 like we are seeing in the NASDAQ. And that's a good point. I mean, I, I have to ask this question. You know, there seems to be some malaise in the traders slash investors. What is it that's sticking psychologically in them to not want to invest more? There's so much cash in the sidelines. Yeah, I get that the 10 years now, 3.795, looking over now. Um, what is, what's sticking in there? What, what's in their heart saying, I, uh, I'm okay, I'm not going to invest just yet, I'm going to wait? Well, I liked your use of the word malaise. I would say ennui, uh, just because it was the wordle word of all words the other day, and I'm sticking it to my son as I talk Ugh. to you. Only he'll understand that. But uh, no, there is a lot of ennui, boredom, malaise in this market because we are waiting for the Fed. The Fed is hiked 10 straight times. All right. Now we keep hearing pause, skip. I don't care what they do as long as they don't raise rates this time. Jay Powell has been adamant. We're going to watch the data. He wants to pause. The people that have been talking, the Fed presidents that have the vote, it's 60-40 in favor of just laying low, pausing, skipping, whatever you want to call it, hopping, uh, and just go one cycle without it and end that 10 straight streak of raising rates see the five percent hold that level as yep. your floor maybe your ceiling uh and then if the data continues to come in hot watch the cpi the same day they start their meeting next tuesday um and then maybe they'll raise again but right now the market is digesting flat to a quarter point hike rather well but what we want to hear as always is is how his tone is in the nest pre in the uh, press conference and afterwards. a few months and back i talked to you i asked you about canada when they stopped raising rates there and you said well don't worry about canada let's worry about the united states um but canada today raised rates again yeah you know what and germany is in a recession and guess what they just made new highs as well um like i said the only thing that bothers me about canada is the damn smoke they're sending our way right now uh <laughs> new yorkers no uh, but uh, yes, uh, Canada to me is not going to lead this market. Um, but yes, they did raise rates, and uh, you know, it is what it is. I, I, I focus on our our Jay Powell here, our Fed chairman, and how it's going to react. I don't think uh, the Canadian rate hike today is going to impact us or our decision coming. Let me ask you uh, about Drucker Miller, though. You, uh, Drucker Miller said that the that uh, he's looking for a hard landing, but yet loves AI. 
Yeah, well, you can you can root against the economy and find one sector that's going to do really well. And that's basically not that he's rooting against the economy, but he says we're going to have some tougher times. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like the fact that he likes AI. There are a lot of people like myself that still feel we're in the early innings that, you know, right now it's the mega caps that will lead this, which is Microsoft. NVIDIA. We saw Marvell have uh, great guidance. Um, and it caused euphoria. And when you have a you know influential voice like Jim Junker Miller talk about you know AI, and more people are going to pay attention. But this is something that we're not going to go backwards. It's here to stay. And more and more companies are going to mention it in their earnings calls and how they're handling AI. You know, it could be Campbell's soup later today when they report and say, oh, we have an AI strategy. I, I, I'm just, you know, obviously making this up. But sure. if you talk about AI and how it's going to impact your business, which it will impact everyone on some stretch, then you're going to turn heads and you may catch a little bit of a tailwind on the euphoria that AI has created. Uh, but as far as those leaders, the Microsofts and the videos that we just quickly mentioned, they are pulling back a little bit. And I think the uptrends are strong. Uh, I think the path higher continues. And Drunken Miller is right on the AI side. I may not agree with them on the hard landing. Right now, things seem to be going all right. The unemployment number is slowly ticking up. Watch 4%, we're at 37 Once we get over 4%, you're going to hear recession talks and the NBER possibly label us an official recession. But the recession has been rolling this whole time. We saw it with lumber. We saw it with gas prices. We saw it with eggs, for, for heaven's sake. Um, you know, it, it's just rotating. And eventually, unfortunately, the labor market is going to cool. And it is a lagging indicator. And they'll officially call this a recession. And by the time we hit it, we're already halfway out of it, if not out of it. Um, I don't think those October lows are going to be tested if we officially hit a recession now, given how far away we are from that. But uh, we'll revisit it from week to week, from data point to data point, just like Jay Powell says. But uh, right now, I like the rotation. I like the direction in some of these tech stocks. They're pulling back. I think it's healthy. And I think, uh, you know, Wednesday will be a very interesting afternoon uh, after this press conference. I mean, have to have, have you on at that time. All right, Jay Woods, Freedom Capital Markets, man, the global strategist there. I love it. Right. Uh, live for the New York Stock Exchange. Jay, we'll see you back here next week. Uh, always a pleasure. Thank you.